If you've ever rode an e-bike for any given length of time, cruising around at 20 miles per hour, you'll eventually wonder, how can I go faster? Since I own a rad power bike, it's a common question that I see on that subreddit or other rad online forums. I notice people, like myself, will go to great lengths and cost to get a few more miles per hour out of their bikes. It reminds me a lot of the early 2000s when the Fast and the Furious movie came out and friends of mine were spending a lot of money on aftermarket mufflers and intakes for their Honda Civics just to get a few more horsepower out of them. The three main components of your typical e-bike that have a direct influence on the amount of speed and or torque that you receive, besides the amount of pedaling that you do, are the controller, the motor, and the main battery. There are, of course, other minor factors that can affect the speed that you get, such as the rider or cargo weight, terrain that you're riding on, wind resistance, and the tread, width, and PSI of your tires. But let's go over the three main components that I just mentioned. An e-bike's controller is aptly named since it controls most of how an e-bike operates. It's essentially the brain of your e-bike and it connects all the electronic components from the headlight to the rear motor. It regulates the amount of power that is fed to the motor. The controller can be instrumental to the power that you get out of your e-bike. Think of it as a water dam. The battery is a huge bank of electric power, like a lake of water. The dam controls how much water can actually flow through. It can let a small trickle of water through, or it can let a torrent, just like an e-bike controller. A small controller will trickle power to the motor, causing low torque, and the larger the amps that a controller can handle, the more aggressive the acceleration and torque. The controller can also set limits to the max speed possible, as well as different throttle levels and the speed in relation to the pedal assist. How the motor affects speed should be fairly obvious, since it's the mechanism that directly makes your e-bike move forward. The more powerful of a motor that you have, the more speed and power that you'll get. In electric e-bike motors, it's measured in terms of wattage. Now the combination of volts and amps we call watts. What? Watts! The more watts, the more powerful of a motor it is. There are some exceptions to this depending on other bike components and what type of motor it is, but overall this is true. For example, an e-bike with a 1000 watt geared hub motor will normally be slower than an e-bike with a 1000 watt mid-drive motor. Because of e-bike regulations, the de facto motor size is 750 watts, but due to vague restrictions and lax enforcement, you can easily find e-bikes sold with motors with far greater wattage. Some e-bike manufacturers will list the continuous power and say 750, however the peak power can be much more. The former two components have a larger role in the amount of power an e-bike can have, and the battery has a relatively smaller role. Your standard e-bike battery will come in three different voltages, 36, 48, and 52 volts. Higher performance e-bikes, such as the Surron or Onyx, use 60 to 72 volt batteries, but those are more of e-motorcycles than e-bikes. The higher voltage battery that you have means the more potential power that can be fed to the motor. So if you have a 48 volt battery and you upgrade to a 52 volt battery, you'll probably see a few more miles per hour from the upgrade. This is why e-bikes will be able to hit, hit higher top speeds with a fresh fully charged battery versus a half dead one. Now I'll go into greater detail on the various ways these components and upgrades can affect your e-bike performance in terms of speed and torque. Rad Power e-bikes are all class two which means that they're limited to speeds of up to 20 miles per hour right out of the box. Once a rad power bike reaches 20 miles per hour, either by throttle or pedal assist, the motor will cut off until that speed drops below that maximum. Rad doesn't freely publish many of the technical specifications of their electronic components, such as the true wattage of the motor or the amps that their controller outputs, so it can be difficult to do an apples to oranges comparison to the stock rad components versus their competitors. I've read online people reporting various amperages with the stock rad controller. Typically I've seen it listed anywhere from 17 to 20 amps, which isn't terrible but a bit underpowered in my opinion. 
In comparison, the Hemingway Cruiser, which is comparable to the now discontinued Rad Rover 5, lists their controller at 22 amps, and they actually freely list this on their website. I didn't have to try to dig it up on some online forum, which I can appreciate. Rad bikes tend to achieve relatively smooth acceleration on their e-bikes, I believe by design, which could be why they choose to have a lower amperage controller when compared to an almost direct competitor's e-bike. The current lineup of Rad e-bikes in the United States come with a 750 watt motor, unless you have a Rad Mission which comes with a 500 watt. Now there's some controversy whether or not this is a quote unquote true 750 watt motor or a 500 watt motor that is simply running at 750 watts. Since that's something that can be easily done with an electric motor, I won't get down that rabbit hole just yet. Rad also comes with a 48 volt, 14 amp hour battery. Unless again, you have a Rad Mission that comes with a lower amp hour battery. Put all of that together and like I mentioned, you get a max speed with electrical assistance of 20 miles per hour. You can of course go faster if you're pedaling, which can be difficult on a 60 pound bike, but it is possible. If you have a rad e-bike with an LCD screen, like the standard LCD screens or the newer dual screen displays that the new Plus models come with, then there's a hidden menu that will let you unlock your rad e-bike past this 20 mile per hour limit. It is worth noting that Rad e-bikes that don't have an LCD display, such as the Rad Runner 2 or 1 or the Rad Missions that come with an LED display, don't have this hack easily accessible. Rad bikes with an LCD display have the potential to bump up their speed from 20 miles per hour to 25 miles per hour. However, in practice, the amount of speed that is produced after this is changed can vary. In my own personal experience, and from what I've read from various other rad riders, you typically can get about a maximum of 23 miles per hour. However, there are some that say you can get a consistent 25 miles per hour, but this hasn't been my experience. From my understanding, the cause of this limited speed from a rad motor is that the customized Bafang or whatever other brand motor rad is using has a limit to the speed in which it can spin at, seemingly by design. Many other e-bike companies give you the option of unlocking their e-bikes past the initial class 2 specs, and some even freely tell you how to do so. Rad, however, seems to strictly adhere to the class 2 speed, and try to keep how to do this hack a closely guarded secret, which is understandable. Since they are the largest e-bike company in North America, they would have a lot to lose if the government overcorrects and clamps down on e-bike component regulations. One very common upgrade that I see people modifying their Rad e-bike with to get the most out of their stock components is the Egg Rider display. The Egg Rider is a small, minimal sized display with a mobile companion app that replaces the stock Rad display, which then allows you to tweak your stock Rad controller. The Egg Rider forces the Rad controller to output more wattage than it normally would as well as it enables you to control and display much more information using the smartphone app. I haven't personally used the Egg Rider, but from what I've read, this is about the easiest and cheapest way to boost your performance of your stock motor and controller. You don't have to be a mechanic to add this to your e-bike. And since it really only involves taking off the stock display and adding the Egg Rider in its place. The only real disadvantage of the Egg Rider, from what I've gathered, is that the display is pretty small, which can be a good thing if you want to minimize the clutter on your handlebars. However, it can be difficult to see in direct sunlight. Be aware that the Egg Rider isn't a plug and play accessory across all e-bikes, so if you have a rad e-bike, you have to make sure that you purchase one specifically programmed for your model. A quick way to calculate the amount of power or watts that is being fed from the controller to the motor is with this simple formula. You take the volts of the battery, 48 volts, times the amperage of the controller, we don't know exactly how many, but we'll say 19 amps. This equals the watts that your motor will be running at, 912. Even though the stock rad setup has a potential of 912 watts, we know that they limit this to 750. The Egg Rider removes this limit and lets you run your Rad bike at that full 912 watts in this example. 
This upgrade doesn't add any more speed to your bike, however, it will give you much more torque than the standard setup allows. More torque means greater power going up hills, so many riders who have hilly terrain say the Egg Rider is a must-have add-on. Many see this as a bare minimum modification that should be done to every rad e-bike. The most common controller upgrade available is a 35 amp controller that is wired up with the stock rad connectors that they use. I've seen 25 amp controller upgrades around as well, but I think the best controller for the money is the 35. If we go back to the equation that we used earlier and use 35 amps instead of the rad controller, which we approximated at 19 amps, we'd get a maximum peak motor wattage 1680. This is quite a jump from the stock 750 watts or even the Egg Rider. This controller is oftentimes referred to as the Bolton controller since it's been synonymous with Bolton e-bikes, now renamed Area 13 e-bikes. However, it is available from other online stores such as Big Game Bikes in the UK or Electro Bike World, which is where I purchased mine. This sort of upgrade is a bit more expensive than the Egg Rider, simply since not only do you have to purchase a new controller for $130, but also the stock red LCD screen is incompatible with it, so a new LCD screen would have to be purchased as well. The two most common controller screens sold with the controller go for about $100, so $230 plus tax is more than double the cost of the Egg Rider, but in my opinion, it's well worth the cost. This upgrade is slightly more difficult to add to your e-bike since it involves switching out your existing controller and dealing with all that wiring, whether that be on the bottom of the e-bike, like it was with my Red Runner Plus, or in other locations. I classified this as a mid-level modification, as opposed to the Egg Rider install, which I'd say was a low-level modification. You can choose from one of several replacement displays and most of the popular options have color screens instead of the basic liquid crystal display. Not to mention they display the amount of voltage that is in the battery. So you don't have to rely on the vague battery level graphic that really doesn't tell you how much battery you have left. I hate having to rely on the five indicator bar battery gauge on the default RAD display. If you have two bars remaining, does that mean you have 40% charge or 21? It's kind of important to know the difference. Just like the Egg Rider, this upgrade doesn't add any speed to your e-bike, just a lot more torque. Grin Technology sells a controller such as the Phase Runner or Base Runner that lets you customize every aspect of your e-bike motor. However, they take a little bit more know-how and programming to work. Upgrading the 48 volt battery to a 52 volt alternative can pump out a few more miles per hour, but due to the high cost of lithium ion batteries, it's probably the least cost efficient way of getting more speed. It's sort of like buying a higher octane gas for your regular old family sedan car at the pump. Sure, you may get a few more horsepower, but it's not really going to turn a minivan into a Corvette. The most you will probably gain by upgrading the battery to a 52 volt is two to three miles per hour more. However, it can provide better power, power efficiency, and range, since it won't be affected as much by voltage sag. So it's not a bad idea, if you're already in the market for a bigger and better battery, to go for a 52. It's just not cost effective if you're solely trying to get more speed. The best for last. By far the most effective way to get more speed out of your e-bike would be to change out the stock motor with a more powerful replacement, such as the quote-unquote true 750 watt motor or even something with more wattage. This has become fairly common with e-bike shops such as Bolton slash Area 13 selling 750 watt motors and creating YouTube videos showing you the apparent size difference between their 750 watt and the stock rad motor and highlighting the speed and torque gain after the upgrades. Regardless of the debate over the stock rad motor being underpowered or not, you can't dispute the fact that if you put a larger motor in the bike, you will go faster. Luckily for most rad bikes, the inside of a new motor upgrade can be dropped into the original housing, so upgrading a geared hub motor can be relatively simple. However, with the Rad Runner Plus, like I have, Rad threw in a curveball, and the motor cable is on the brake rotor side, so you have to be careful which motor you purchase. 
and you may have to relace the spokes instead of this hot swap, so keep that in mind. The cost of these motors can range, but typically I see them anywhere from $200 to $300, depending on what the wattage is. I've seen a few owners decide to switch out their front wheel for a front direct drive hub motor. This, of course, can be more complicated, but they're generally way more expensive. These are the most common ways of speeding up your rad power bike, or if not more speed, at least getting more acceleration or torque. Keep in mind that changing the wattage and speed of your e-bike can put you in some hot water, legally speaking, in some regions. So if you do decide on doing any or all of these modifications, that you do so at your own risk. Rad makes Class 2 e-bikes for a reason. You can generally ride a Class 2 e-bike in most places that you can ride a regular pedal bike, and you don't need to register it or get insurance or license. If you decide to amp up your e-bike to a Class 3 or beyond, you may have to do those things to stay legal, and you may not be able to ride everywhere you would normally. Also, by modifying your Rad e-bike, you run the risk of voiding your manufacturer warranty, so keep that in mind. Well, I hope this video gave some useful information to you regarding e-bike upgrades. Please let me know if it did or if you have any questions. Please leave a comment and I'll do my best to respond. So like and subscribe if you want more videos from me. Thanks for watching.